Test. There we go. I guess I wasn't ready, was I? Amen. Well, we're going to uh, show a short uh, video uh, as we get it up. You know, there was a time when, uh, uh, when I was, le well, I've always led songs, but uh, I would always pick out the song Because He Lives. And it was like every service, uh, you know, you, you go through your little card the file and out comes Because He Lives, you know. And then one, one day I came to, we came to church. We're going to sing this song, Because He Lives, okay? So one day I came and uh, I looked for Because He Lives. And it wasn't there. And I'm going, where did I put the, the song, Because He Lives? And come to find out, Shelly and, and Patty, my, my wife and daughter, hid it from me. Because they, uh, they said I sang it too much. So... Uh, we're going to sing it tonight to, off of a YouTube video because uh, most of the time when we sing Because He Lives, we just sing the chorus. And so I want us to sing the, sing the whole thing, okay, together. You don't have to stand, but we'll sing it together, okay? I'll have to look at the words, too. Oh, uh, we, have a, we have a sheet back there with all the words on it, too. You already got it? Okay, just in case you can't see it up here. Okay, here we go.
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know, and that's the very uh, message that we have tonight and in all of life as we live for Jesus Christ. It's because he lives that we can face tomorrow. This uh, simple song was written by Bill and Gloria Gaither uh, in 1970, uh, early 70s. And Bill and uh, uh, Gloria met at a high school. They were teachers. And she taught French, and I forget what he was teaching. And, but in their local church, they began to sing songs. And the Gaither group has been around, and in fact, both of them are still living. Uh, but they sang these songs, and then they wrote this particular song when their third child was born. Now, this was right after, uh, some of you may remember the Kent State Massacre. In 13 seconds, uh, the National Guard have uh, shot 67 rounds into a pe peaceful protest on Kent State. Four students at the end were dead, nine were wounded, one was paralyzed for life. This is when... Uh, this young couple, the Gaithers, were having their, their child. I grew up in a small town, uh, Needles, California. Very naive, didn't get, wasn't into politics, not like we are today, most of us. Uh, we know everything. I went to Stanford University about the time that this Kent State massacre happened. And uh, I heard there was going to be a demonstration and so all of a sudden I find myself standing on a knoll of uh, grassy knoll overlooking the computer center. And there was a set-in. The students were uh, surrounding this, this uh, uh, computer center because they said that it was being used for the Vietnam War. And so as I was standing there and watching what was going on, uh, busload after busload of uh, riot police, maybe National Guard, I'm not sure, uh, began to get out and stand in formation and charge these students. Civil unrest, uh, racial unrest. In our school systems, uh, they were proclaiming that God was dead. Uh, it had already been maybe six or seven uh, maybe even up to 10 years, the Bible and prayer had been taken out of the school system. A very, very difficult time. And Bill and Gloria Gaither were standing in their living room, holding their third little baby. And uh, with all of this going on and going through their minds, and Bill had just had mononucleosis and had a very difficult winter. Gloria had been attacked by her church and belittled and persecuted in a sense for things that she had not done. And so their whole world is, is spinning. Of course, that doesn't happen to us, does it? And as they held that little baby, just a brand new newborn, they wrote this song together because he lives. It's because Jesus Christ lives that you and I can live. It's the reason that we can face tomorrow. And they write these words, How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings. But greater still the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives. This is the powerful truth of the gospel that you and I are 
uh, so privileged to be saved and know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. It's because Jesus Christ lives. In uh, Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to turn over there to it. The Bible says, by which all, uh, well, let's start at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. This is the gospel. Every time you and I preach, and I'm talking about every time I witness, you witness, we need to declare that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And so we're going to read our scripture uh, out of John chapter 14, because this is the scripture that inspired uh, this song by Bill and Gloria Gaither, Because He Lives, John 14, uh, beginning at uh, verse 15. Now, when we think about this portion of Scripture, uh, it, is, uh, it is the portion of Scripture where Jesus uh, tells them that in my Father's house are many mansions. And in verse 1, it, uh, they will get to verse 15. Verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Think about this. Jesus is just about ready to be crucified. He's talking to his disciples. He knows this is facing him. They don't understand it, but he knows this faces him. And yet he looks to his disciples and says, Let not your heart be troubled. And see, you and I, as we live life and as we uh, see all the, uh, the, the despair that's around us, that you and I uh, can hear these words of Jesus that says, let not your heart be troubled. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So let's look at the uh, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me. Listen to these words. Because I live, you shall live also. And that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. And he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Because I live, ye shall live also. Isn't that great news? Here's, uh, uh, you know, when you begin to read the Bible, you begin to find that every word uh, that is in the Bible that uh, uh, is so important for you and I to understand to, that it is written for us. Because Jesus Christ lives, we live also. And, and what does he say, say here? He, he says in this portion of the scripture, uh, I'm in my Father. And you in me and I in you. Jesus is in us. And it's because he lives that you and I can live. And this is, uh, uh, this is the greatest news that you and I could ever, ever imagine. That he lives. He rose from the dead. In John 14, 6, this same portion of Scripture uh, he says, Jesus saith to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's able to say that because he rose from the dead. He's able to say that because he lives within us. I'm going to skip ahead and quote this scripture. Uh, uh, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. 
Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. And all you got to do is put your name in it. I'm going to skip ahead again and tell you uh, and say that the very thing that we want to do today is take uh, from, uh, uh, from this uh, simple message a desire to glorify God each and every moment of our life. See, the Bible says uh, in Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. What's your favorite song? What song did you sing today? Well, today's yesterday. But what song are we going to sing tomorrow? Because I live, Jesus said, you live. And we can sing that song that was written in the very uh, difficult times. You know, we, we live in difficult times. But if you would uh, snatch yourself uh, uh, and go back to the future and put yourself on Kent State campus or Berkeley or Stanford or all the many universities around the world that had such upheaval and young men getting a draft card notice and running off to Canada. And, and if you were a Christian during those early 70s, you'd uh, been with... Uh, uh, you'd been singing the songs, uh, 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 The Eve of Destruction, because we thought that this was going to be the end. But because Jesus lives, you and I can face tomorrow. 1 Corinthians 15 that we uh, says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the fr first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. What a powerful thing it is to know that we serve and live for a risen Savior. This is just not a, a, a figment of somebody's imagination, or as the Bible says, not some made-up fable. But this is something that you and I intimately know. And that's Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. In Acts chapter 17, verse 3, the Bible says, Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Throughout the book of Acts and the New Testament, after Jesus Christ rose from the dead, they declared that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And Jesus himself declared that he is going to come and live in us. This is why we can have the victory. This is why we can live and defeat uh, uh, every assault against our lives. And it's because Jesus Christ lives. And, that, and, and we sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. It's, and so uh, we need to be a people that sing and worship God uh, every uh, opportunity that we have. If you're going through a difficult time, we have to sing and worship God and begin to give God the great grace and glory. You know, there was a, a month after month after month in my own personal life where I was, uh, where it seemed like the fiery darts of hell would, uh, would come assaulting my mind. And uh, it was at this, it's interesting because there's such a, there's such a peace in my home. We pray all the time. Okay. So, but the fiery darts of hell would come at the same spot in my in my walking in the house. Isn't that interesting? And so uh, what I would do is I would stop and I'd lift my hands to the sky 
And I'd begin to sing, through our God, we shall do valiantly. It is he that treads down the enemy. You see, it's Jesus Christ himself that treads down our enemies. I couldn't stand against it. I didn't have the strength. Uh, you might say to yourself, I'm just not going to think those thoughts anymore. And then there, there, they, are. there, they, are. there they are. No, no, I'm not going to think those thoughts anymore. Uh, well, there they are. And, and you go, okay, I'm going to think about uh, anything else but this. And there it is. And so because it was such an assault, uh, I would lift my hands. I'd just stop it. I'd just lift my hands. Through our God, I'm going to sing it again. Through our God, we shall do valiantly. It is he that treads down our enemy. We shall stand and shout the victory. Christ is king. And so there's a song for you when, you're, uh, when the fiery darts come, isn't it? Christ shall tread down our enemies. We cannot stand. You know, the devil's got a long history of, uh, uh, of uh, 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 defeating uh, and, and messing with people's minds. And so we have to stand in the living Christ. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. This is the Jesus that lives. He's, he lives in our lives every moment of every day. And when I'm walking, uh, uh, Jesus Christ is in my life. And we, you know, wherever I am, sometimes I'm sitting there and, I, and I'm, uh, uh, and I'm uh, there in the kitchen, you know, and, and wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like the sea. Don't we, we just uh, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. You know, and the thing that was uh, about that song here a few months ago is I, I hadn't remembered it for so long that all of a sudden, wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll... So we have to take from this a melody in our hearts and worship God when we're driving our cars or walking down the street or shopping uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the uh, uh, grocery store begin to hum a song and sing a song and, uh, and tell the person when it's a long line, say, uh, first shall be last and the last shall be first. Uh, who's giving me cuts? The, you know? And all of a sudden, you've got a conversation. Wherever I am, and God is a living Christ. He's in our lives wherever we go. He's helping us walk and be strengthened, amen, and because he lives, you live. You're alive in Christ. I can remember before I got saved, I, uh, so, uh, so real to me standing out in front of uh, where, uh, where I went to work, uh, and uh, I worked for the Santa Fe Railroad, and you'd go and you'd check the board. The board was, uh, uh, they had your name there. When you, the train would come in, uh, well, your, your name, well, you're four trains away is what it was. So I'm standing there looking at it. Somebody came and said, uh, how you doing, Ron? I said, what do you care? Because I wasn't living. I was dead in my heart. And I couldn't appreciate just uh, 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 common courtesy. You know, and, and uh, uh, even today I go, man, that was such a bad thing to say, you know. But I was dead. And until Jesus Christ came and resurrected my life and made me brand new, I had no reason to live. And that's what you and I need to keep kind of at the front of our mind is that people that we see, they have real no reason to live because Jesus Christ is not, has not uh, given them a brand new life, but you and I, he has. We have been born again. That's why Jesus told uh, uh, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. And the born-again experience uh, is such a powerful thing because in that, uh, uh, that born-again experience, uh, you and I stand in the love of Christ. 
In that born again experience, uh, we're able to stand in his commandments and do all that we can to live for him and keep his word and understand that he loves us. Uh, uh, when we stumble and fall, he's there to lift us up and encourage us back uh, uh, to walk with him. We fully identify with the risen Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You and I belong to God, don't we? We're not our own. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's why we live. We live to please him. We live to honor him. And we uh, live uh, to glorify his name. 1 Corinthians 15, again, it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. What a tremendous thing it is to be alive in Christ. Remember that uh, Jesus tarried a few days uh, when he heard the news that Lazarus was dead. And then when he finally did show up, Mary and Martha have already had the funeral. Lazarus had already been put in the grave. Stones had already been rolled uh, in front. And yet they're still uh, grieving, and the people, his friends and family are there. And, uh, Jesus tells Martha, and Martha says to him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of the God, which should come into the world. You and I shall never die. These bodies are going to grow old. They might turn to dust. But you will never die. Because you've been born again. The real you is, uh, 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 is we can't see the real you. It's like a computer. Uh, you know, it's got the hardware, uh, but the software is what makes it, makes it tick. And... and and uh, you and I have uh, uh, the soul as our software. The Spirit of God has energized and made us alive. And when this, uh, when this body perishes, you and I live forever. Think, uh, think about Jesus on the cross. Today you'll be with me in paradise. His body uh, has, been, uh, has, has uh, uh, perished, but his, uh, uh, the real him is living forever and ever and ever. This is the, this is what a hope we have. This is why when things turn south and things go difficult, you and I uh, uh, understand that we live forever. We we don't have to be bound by this world or by all those things uh, 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 that uh, uh, hinder us. In Colossians chapter one, the Bible says, "If then you be risen with Christ." Seek those things which are above where Christ sets at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Our old life is dead. That Ronnie that, uh, uh, that uh, ridiculed that, uh, that uh, uh, co-worker and said, oh, Do you really care? Is dead. But he's alive in Christ, brand new in all that God has for us. And as we live for God, he is there with us each and every moment uh, of every day. And this body at one uh, uh, is going to be changed. And I don't know what the resurrection body is going to be like. But it's going to be able to walk through these physical walls. Some people say that uh, uh, we live in four dimensions, three physical at one time. As Einstein said, time was a dimension, physical dimension. But 
Jesus is probably at 10 or 11 dimensions. We can't imagine it. But because he's in a different, he, he's, he's in eternity, it's a different dimension. He could walk through. And so we're going we're gonna to see him as he is. And we're going to know him as he is because we see him as he is. So we're going to get a glorified body. We're going to have a, a few more dimensions to us. It's going to be pretty good. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Amen. Isn't that a glorious thing? Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Whatever's happening in life, we know that we're going to live forever. And you know, one of the things as we, uh, as we live, the most we take if you took a survey, what's the most important thing for you? To be loved. We live and we're loved by the God that gave his life on Calvary's cross, by the Father that sent him, and by the Holy Ghost that has been sent to baptize us in his glory. He loved me, and the Father loves me. In chap uh, chapter 14, of verse 21 that we read, the Bible says, He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is a promise. He will show himself to you. He will manifest to you. In 1 John 4, 9, In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Listen to this, because it's very important. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the substitute for our sins. You know, how often do you talk to people and they say, uh, you know, God, God is love and, and uh, oh, I love God. Yeah, but it's not that you love God. That's empty words. It's that he loved us and gave his life on Calvary's cross for us, and we accept that as a, as a payment for our sin. And because he paid for our sin, we leave that, uh, uh, that relationship, that revelation, we leave that in a brand new life, uh, alive in Christ. Amen. Our final scripture, 1 John 1, 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. He's a living Savior, and we walk with him and talk with him each and every moment of every day. He loves you tonight. He cares about you. We can go from this place with a melody in our heart, every head bowed, every eye closed tonight, as we begin to uh, look to Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. If you're here tonight, you're not saved. You don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but, but you want to know him. He died on the cross for you. The gospel is, he lived, he died, and he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. If you're not saved or backslid, would you give your life to Jesus? Okay, we're just going to change it for a moment. Our, our decision tonight is to go with the melody of the Lord in our hearts. That we begin to carry this uh, through our, day, our, our days ahead, our daily life. That we sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Let's stand all across this place. These altars are open. Meet with Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, we're going to sing that song.
So our takeaway is to be those that have a melody in our hearts each and every moment of every day. We have an action plan. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we have an action plan. Go from this place with melody in our hearts. Not the only place that it says that. Ephesians says, uh, uh, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody into your heart to the Lord. That's our opportunity. Amen. Uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity to preach. Appreciate your pastor, Pastor Chad, Patricia, and Wyatt entire family, Colton, uh, hopefully leading songs today and for his dad to preach there in San Jose and Paulina and Tarek uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas. You keep all this family in their prayer. I'll keep praying for you, Herman. I'll keep praying for you. Amen. Rosa, your family, uh, Nathaniel, Devitt, God's grace upon each and every one. And Frankie, thank God. And pray for us. Pray for Patty and I as we uh, are there in Fresno. Amen. Devin, uh, come and take the service. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering as Devin comes. Amen, church. What a great sermon that was. Amen. It was true. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. So whatever worries about your future or like anything going on in your life right now that is putting you down, just let that go because we can face tomorrow. Amen. And it's, even though we're still here, we like we have a plan. We have a plan to be a witness, to be soul savers in these last days. Amen. Uh, so tonight, let's close in prayer. Amen. I like uh, Brother Y to lead us in prayer. Amen. Church.